All right, Greenhorns, we're back with more of uh, West of Lothian. Yep. Heading on into the tent and sitting down for the show. Hey, everybody. Benches are for the audience. Take a seat and a smattering of other, of other patrons appear and sit down as well. <laughs> Excuse me. After a minute or two, there's a crash of cymbals and a clown runs in from backstage curtain and jumps onto the stage. Okay. In contrast, the other clown's colorful clothing, his is relatively simple. Black wool trousers and a bright crimson shirt. Worn under pale tan leather jacket with a fringe on the sleeves and a red heart painted on the shoulder. His face paint is plain white without any colored accents, contrasting his curled black mustache and thin goatee. A snappy silk top hat with a rakish tilt tops off the outfit. He doffs his hat and bows with a deep theatrical flourish, and the small audience claps politely. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, and welcome all to Barnum and Bob's Perfectly Normal Traveling Sideshow Circus. I hope you've been enjoying our attractions and distractions of our little traveling carnival. And now it's time for our star performance, the main, the main attraction. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put your hands together for... Loud drum while starts the gestures to the curtain and the cymbals crash again. Clown puts his hat back on with a chuckle. Me, Barnaby Bob. Much obliged, much obliged. You're far too kind. Well, I haven't even shown you anything yet. With a laugh, he flips a large bowie knife in the air. You don't even see where he pulled it from. The knife glitters as it spins. He catches it and flips it again, this time catching and balancing on point on the tip of his finger. Holds that pose very still from it, then jerks his hand away. The knife thunks into the wood of the stage floor deep enough to even the e that he has to give it a jerk from side to side before he can yank the blade free. He winks broadly to the audience. Wouldn't be, any, uh, wouldn't be any fun if they weren't sharp, would it, ladies and gents? Pulls two more knives from his jacket, begins a flashy, elaborate knife juggling act. Three spinning blades somehow turn into four, and his hat is added to the mix, floating lightly through the cascade of knives without a single scratch. He finishes the routine by catching two of the knives in each hand and allowing his hat to fall nearly to the ground before catching on the tip of his boot and kicking back in the air and onto the top of his head. Yay! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's the applause I believe I've earned. Let me get uh, let me get back to Taylor. I'm not doing voices well today. Sorry, I'm not at my best. Took a lot of hats to get where I am to today. He just he chuckles as he adjusts his hat back to the original rakish angle. And now for the grand finale, I'll need a volunteer from the audience. A few hands go up. Bonner Bob ignores them and looks straight at you. How about you, sir? Okay. Good, I like a brave one. Uh, step on up and on the stage hill. There we go, he looks all southern. Your name, please? Calvernook Crabdangle. Real pleasure to finally meet you, Calvernook Sneaky Crabdangle. Hey, Sneaky's my middle name. I kind of said that earlier. Couple of clowns haul a large wooden panel about seven feet tall and four feet wide up onto stage. They stand up vertically behind you, stay there, holding it steady. It has two holes in it. Slightly above waist level, uh-oh, and a lot of knife marks. All right. <clears throat> Press your back up against the flat, against the wood, please, and push your hands through the holes. You do so. The holes are a fraction too high, so it's not very comfortable. One of the clowns pulls your arms back tighter and ties them together with rough hemp. becomes even more uncomfortable for a variety of reasons. Don't worry. This is just to make sure we wouldn't want any sudden and unexpected movements. You don't make any. We wouldn't want that, now would we? Uh, right not, son. Everything's under control. Steps up to you and adjusts your collar. I seem to have given him a voice that's a mix of Foghorn Leghorn and Johnny Bravo. Out of my control. You know, Calvin Oak, we get a sharp customer in here from time to time, but my, my, you are the sharpest I've seen yet. However, I'd bet a shiny silver dollar I've got something up my sleeve that's even sharper. His pupils narrow to vertical slits as he grins at you, revealing rows of pointed yellow teeth. Shark teeth, dang. As he turns away, you see the heart on his shoulder as though the jacket is drawn with an arrow through it. And the word mom, it doesn't look painted on. Okay. You struggle a little, but your arms are too tightly bound. The rough hand rope bind your wrists. Barnaby Bob strolls to the other end of the stage, turns face you. No, don't, no, no, don't you worry. This will all be over soon. Just don't move. Knife in his hand again, gives it a few twirls and flips. Light reflected from the blade glitters in his eyes without warning he hurls at you. Thunk! The knife hits the wood before you can even blink, a hair's breadth from your left ear. Stare him down! Barnaby Bob grins at you as the crowd applause. Another knife appears in one hand and an apple in the other. Tosses the apple on the stage hand who balances on your head. Time for the old William Tell routine! Bit of cliche perhaps, but there's a reason it's a classic, eh, ladies and gentlemen? Crowd watches with rapt attention as he flourishes the knife, spinning and flipping it behind his back, and then fastening your ears to your Cold apple juice dribbles into your hair and down the back of your neck. Two for two! What do you say, Calvin Shall we go for one more? Stare him down. 
Barnaby, and anything else will get you kicked out. Barnaby Bob pulls out another knife and gives it a quick stropping across the pale leather sleeve of his jacket before he whips a colorful spotted handkerchief from his pocket and blindfolds himself. This time his smile is much colder. I advise you to watch closely, Calvin Nook Crab Dangle, since you're the only one of us who can. The crowd laughs, but you don't really hear it. The knife spins in his hand this time, either because of adrenaline or because he's actually moving slower. You see the motion of his arm as he throws it. He twists his wrists in an odd way you don't think he did before. The knife is flying at you, flying right at your right eye. Don't move. The knife incredibly swerves at the last possible moment. Thunk. You feel the wood shake from the force that stabs into the board. Metal is cold against your right cheek. Audience erupts into tears as Barney Bob removes his blindfold and pumps a fist triumphantly. Ooh. One of the stagehand clowns unties your wrists and helps get your arms out of the holes. Bob takes your hand and raises it in the air victorious. Well now, ain't he a good sport, folks? And brave a target as I've ever had. Take a bow, Calvin Nook Crab Dangle. Bow to the cheering crowd, carefully keeping your eyes on Bob. He bows as well, removing his hat with an elaborate flourish and takes a slip of paper out of it. As a token of appreciation, I'd like to give our star volunteer a year's supply of dynamite. Use it in good health. And as he hands you the coupon, the clown leans in close to your ear and whispers, It's the only one and you'll get, boy. Barnaby Bob waves and blows kisses to the crowd as you climb down from the stage and disappears through the backstage curtain. Well, that tears it. Looks like we aren't dealing with regular carnies dressed with clowns. These are definitely full-blown evil demon clowns like from the stories. And they've given you orders to back the hell off their operation. So now what? Clown Rampage! Nope, I'm just going to go knock on his door. Wagon is old, but well-maintained. Brass pack leading Barnaby Bob. I'm going to knock on the door politely. Come on in. You? I thought I made myself perfectly clear the last time we met, and yet you knock politely and walk straight into the lion's mouth. You are either extremely brave or extraordinarily foolish, boy. Both, I might hazard to guess. Well, I've got questions that need answered. And you think I'm going to answer them? Ha! Huh. If I didn't find you amusing, I'd have banished you off the face of this earth for what little you know already. I appreciate that, but I can't leave this situation unresolved. What curiosity did to the cat is going to seem like a Sunday picnic compared to what, compared to what I'll do to you if you anger me, boy. Go ahead and ask your questions, but bear in mind, I gave you fair warning. What are you plotting exactly? Bold as brass you are. If you think I'll answer that, you got another thing coming. Don't try my patience. What are you doing here? Straight to the heart of the matter. Well, now, I had you pegged as a clever one. Why don't you tell me? You're here because of the cows. Perhaps you got a brain rattle around that skull of yours after all, boy. That's correct. The cows came home, and as you and as you say, the, the cows came home, as you say, and we followed them. Why? Why don't disappoint me now you've impressed me, boy. Kid, think about it. Your age-old enemy you've been fighting since time out of mind, ups and leaves. No farewell, no postcard. Wouldn't you want to know what the hell was going on? You don't know? Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm going to say something I probably shouldn't have. Uh, buddy... You are treading on some dangerously thin ice here. I hope you are thanking your lucky stars. I consider you essentially insignificant. Hmm. I can hear those gears ticking in that three-pound dog brain... Dog... Bleh. Three-pound dog's dinner you call a brain, son. Now it's my turn to ask a question. How are you going to convince me I shouldn't make you disappear like a fart in a tornado? Well, make it good, Kelbinuk Crab Dangle. Make it good because you got one shot at this. You need me. Do I now? And pray tell what I need you for. My freak show is plenty full. You got three, buddy. Anyway, there aren't enough there aren't enough of you to be an army. You're just a scouting party. You're reconnaissance. You're here to gather information. Yes, and you can't do that efficiently. Not the way you guys look. You stand out too much. You need a human scout. Don't you play giant games with me, Sonny Jim. You are talking to Barnaby Bob, Duke of Hell, and I can make your worst personal limit, Mayor. Look like a choir of softly singing angels. I'm serious. Look, I'm not your enemy. The cows are. And I just said, I'm serious. And my phone just said, thought I said, hey, Siri. I'm not your enemy. The cows are. And if you're after the cows, not humans, then you aren't my enemy either. Enemy of my enemy? I can't imagine we'll ever be friends, Bob. But so long as it's mutually profitable, I think we can come to an arrangement. You promise to leave the people of this world alone, and I'll tell you what I find out about the cows. I gotta hand it to you, kid. You may well be the first human being ever to leave old Barnaby Bob speechless. We got a deal? All right, I agree. I agree. 
Uh, we won't make any trouble for the humans. You bring me anything of interest you find about the cows. Hell, if it's good, I might even pay you. Good. You're a smart fella, Kelbernook Crabdangle. You better be smart enough to know what'll happen if you double-cross me. Mama didn't raise a fool. Good for her. Shows you on the map on his desk. Location Tannery. This'll get you started. There's an old tannery away south of Myon. I've sent a few, there, a few of the fellas there already. Go have a look. You find anything worth seeing, you let me know. One thing, you are strictly undercover. I won't be telling my boys about you. Not that I can easily get a message to the ones that feel anyhow. If you need to defend yourself against them, well, so be it. Good luck to you. All right. There's an uncrackable safe here. It's warm to the touch, and I don't recognize the symbols on the dial. Oh, if only I could get whatever was in that safe. But I'm sure it's completely lost. Yeah, there's a way. Eventually, there's a way. And it has to do with me not poisoning them skeletons. All right, I could investigate the tannerannery. It's around here somewhere. Where is the tannery? Ah, Danny's Tannery. That's a long way to go. Ooh, ah, I need that lockpicking skill. I need another book. I should start exploring the new area for more books. That's what I'll do. Dang, name it. Sounds like there's a lot of fighting going on inside the tannery, except instead of regular fighting, like shouting and gunfire and chairs, it's a lot of ghostly bellowing and shrill cackling laughter. Sounds like a real bad scene, in other words. Clowns versus cows. As you went to the tannery, the second thing you notice, the place has been abandoned for years. Probably since the cows came home. A lot of the equipment is wrecked and all of it's covered with dust. The first thing you notice, there's a bunch of rodeo clowns in here fighting with, well, they aren't exactly cows, more like possessed skins of cows. That's a little strange, because you've seen people wearing, for example, cow leather chaps, and you've never seen anyone attacked by their chaps. Hmm. Maybe there's something about the tanning process that makes leather impervious to possession, and these ghost cow whatever's ever are... Ghost... Cow ghost whatever's are untanned hides? In any case, the cows and clowns seem preoccupied enough with their fighting they haven't noticed you. At least not yet. You approach the clown and weird leather ghost thing. They take notice of you and stop fighting while they process this. New development. The clown, unfortunately, seems to decide he hates more clowns while he hates you. The cow, unfortunately, decided he hates you more. All right, clown comb. Ooh, we got the drop on him. That was an amusing little noise, that clown made. All right, I'm gonna make you go boom. All right. You beat the cow, the enemy of your enemy is apparently not your friend. The clown decides it's his turn to be on the right side of the screen. All right. Boom, now you're on fire, and now you're shot dead. How do you like that? It happens. One clown and one cow down. A lot more fighting, so a pat on the back. I'll have to wait till later. Old toolbox. What's in the toolbox? Toolbox, 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 toolbox. Leather shears. Eh, there's a weapon. Two clowns, two cows. A whole lot of manure and a whole lot of lime. Put the lime in the coconut. You attempt to sneak up on the cows fails, assuming you were sneaking and not just moseying over. Cows appear all too willing to add your face to the list of faces they hate, and turn their attention to the clowns who jump on the up opportunity to get the jump on their ancient enemies. Join the fracas! I am joining the fracas! Magic! Oh, wrong magic. Magic! There we go. Shoot it! Boom. Go beaner. True to form, the clowns are on your side betray you. Well, it's not really betray. They never actually agreed to work with me. It's just, you know, magic. Right in the face. Boom. Okay. And then, yeah, just shoot him. And then the bean will kill him. Oh, the bean didn't kill him. I'm going to have to kill him with guns. Oh, the huge manatees. Oh, I didn't read that. Oops. Oh, well. It just would have been another after combat message with probably one somewhat amusing line. Okay. This scene has the makings of a real brawl. Now, not only does one of the clowns have a nasty look in his eye, nasty and typical, I mean, but one of the possessed cowhides is stretched over a tanning frame, which makes it stronger somehow, I assume. Looks like a real brawl. Oh, there are so many clowns today. Ooh, hold on. I'm going to douse it with kerosene. It's all extra flammable now. Boom! 
Okay, you're on fire. You're all shot up. Hey, how come you got to live? You should not be alive. You should be- there you go. Who's a good bean? Sonny's a good bean. His name is Sonny now. Alright, I already used that one. Mr. His name is Mr. Bean. There we go. Hey, does anybody know if the character Mr. Bean has a canon first name? I mean, I know Rowan Atkins' his name. Guess what? The clowns turn on you after all the cows are dead. After all the cows are dead. There we go. What makes you think this will go any better for you than it did for them, Winky? Alright, nice clown. Eat fire. Eat shotgun and eat beans. With... Oh, one of them hit me. Oh, the humanity. One of them hit me. I'm telling. Shotgun! I call shotgun. Okay. That was terrible. Take that clown's knife. Oh, look, they had a key. I may actually speed that one up, too, because that was three fights in rapid succession. Body must have been lying here since the cows came home. There isn't much left of him. Poke around. There's an old key. Okay. Okay, I need to close that for one thing. Pile of loose boards. Need to come back if I have a hammer. If I had a hammer. Wait, that's if I were a rich man. Okay, the door's locked. It looks like the key you found on that clown. It looks like it'll fit. You wanna go out there? It sounds like one hell of a fight. Oh boy. Oh jeez. This is not a good situation to be in. You quickly hide behind some old tan hides. Huh, is that why they're called that? Lol. Three clowns out here, each armed with a nasty knife. One of them's licking his knife, and the sound you think makes makes you think maybe he is literally sharpening the blade on his tongue. Facing down two of the stretched cow hides, and a monstrous thing looks like an entire cow skeleton draped in flayed cow skin. Oh, I bet you think you're really clever, breaking through to the human plane. Did you think we wouldn't follow you? Why did you think you'd find a weapon here to use against us? Why did you just try to escape? Moo. What? You take that back! No, I don't seem to notice. You can sneak out the door if you're real careful. No! I declare fie on your careful. Hey, who the hell are you? Uh, Candy Graham? Uh oh. No, Lord Judge! Get him! Okay. I bet you that clown isn't going to be hurt when, it, when the actual fight starts. When the next fight starts. I just bet it ain't. Alright, Moober B. Moobles Mo I don't know. I'm not good at making up names off the top of my head for cows. Alright. Moobles B. That's not a terrible cow name. A little kid story ish, but uh, it's not the worst I could have done. Milkford. How do you like that, Milkford? That's a cow name. Remember I heard one. Alright. As predictable as ever, the clowns turn on you once you've helped them defeat the cows. Yeah, I got the jump on them. How did I get the jump on them? Oh, probably because I knew they were coming. I just... Somehow I knew this was coming. I was all like, gee, I wonder if they're gonna... Okay, bring it on. Haha, -ha, you burned. You burned up, it's funny. Magic! And buckshot! What? Wait, it's a good thing cl clowns hate cows more than they hate humans. That fight could have gone way worse. Fortunately, it's pretty unlikely to run into any more animated leather clad cow skeletons on your adventure, right? Which way really? Too high, too tan to be possessed. Storage shed. There's a guy hiding back here. He's not very good at hiding. Um, hello? Oh, thank God! Oh, you aren't one of those horrible clowns! No, I'm Kelbernook. Kelbernook Crabdangle. Oh, well, I'm Grady Tanner. It's a good thing you arrived. I couldn't have held out much longer. Are you a towner? Tanner, is that your surname? Well, both. What are you doing in here? Hiding! I mean, why are you hiding in here? Because I don't want to die? What's your story? Well, I was scavenging for tanning materials, and cow's bane ain't as easy to get a hold of as it was in the old days, but while I was searching, these cows showed up, and then these clowns showed up, so I uh, locked myself in here to hide. 
What's cow's bane? An herb used for tanning leather. You can't grow it in large batches anymore because cows show up and wreck the place. So there's other stuff we use for pig leather and such. It's not as good though. Cows wreck your herb gardens? Yeah, if you're growing more than about a flower pot's worth, they get wind of it somehow. They hate the stuff. Can't figure why. Here, I've got a few extra seeds you can have. Be careful with them. How long have you been in here? Three or four days. I'm starving. Cow's bane's poisonous, so I've been chewing on this old leather hat for sustenance. Seriously? Yeah. Want some? No. I took care of the clowns and the cows. Wonderful. Thank you. As soon as I get my new shop set up, you can count on me for leather goods you need. First one's on the house. You wouldn't have to know where I could set up shop. What happened to your old shop? Care to guess? Cows? Uh, yep. Empty lot in dirt water. Yeah, I'm filling up those empty lots. All right. One at a time. I got the hot dog stand. I got a leather tannery. All right. Hmm. Hold on. There we go. I knew there was more to be had here. All right. What's that? Blossom gin. Gin blossoms. Oh, God. That's a terrible joke. Gosh, a real-life nun. Oh, yes. I am Sister Tabitha. I'm Calvernut Crabdangle. What's with the cots? Well, what with the cow attacks in all, I felt my faith would be better served running this place as a clinic rather than just a church. I also sell a lot of medical go supplies if you'd like your healing to go. You need any errands run? Funny you should ask. I've been experimenting with the healing properties of purple grass that grows near here, but I've run out. Would you pick some up for me? It grows near a cave with a humming sound. I know that place. All right. Yeah, I want to buy medical supplies. All right. Uh, ooh, that's that's not okay. Ooh, broken legs pills. You know what's just what's sure which is strange? Are these work at all, or that they only work on legs? Uh, blood building tonic is a low level healing or regeneration healing every round thing. Hummy cave. All right. Ooh. Loud thwack noise draws your attention. Follow it to a man in a once white apron who is butchering a bighorn sheep or some other large desert animal with an oversized meat cleaver. Hauling implement on his shoulder for another blow catches sight. Who oh, there? Don't test me, boy. I'll chop you up like this god or whatever it is. Um. Help him out with his cleaving technique. Easy there. You're a butcher, right? You know chef magic? Oh, uh, you're a bean slinger? I know a couple of things, but never studied it for real. I'll teach him telekinesis. Might help you handle that uh, cleaver more easily. Telekawashis. He spends some time teaching him how to manipulate objects with his mind. Well enough to make his cleaver a little more light and unwieldy. He gives you some of the animal carcasses payment. Ooh, steak! Ooh, that's ooh, that's nice. Slab of raw goat flesh. The word goat flesh gives you goose flesh. The word goose flesh gives you heebie-jeebies. Heebie-jeebies. How am I supposed to find purple grass? Oh. How did I know that was purple? Because we all live in a Pokemon world. I mean, this is a black and white world. All right. I got you, Grace. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. Blessings upon you. All right. Well, then. Um, professor's house. Oh, I should probably go there. Yes, I should. Hello, Professor. Beeping machine leads you to a ramshackle house. You can't find this place until you have uh, the beeping machine from the humming cave. Flush. Flush. Hey, check myself. The books are so boring, it's a wonder the shelf isn't full of holes. This dresser contains ten inches of the same shirt and twenty identical socks. The device does not appear to be operational uh, unless its function is to do nothing. All right, Professor. Uh, excuse me, my name's Carable Nut Crabman Girl. What? Oh, hi, I didn't notice you come in. I'm not used to visitors, but uh, folks generally call me the professor. Is there something I can do for you? Yes, I found this bleeping gizmo and sort of followed the bleeping and it led me here. Well, I'll be <laughs> certainly led you to the right place, young man. This is El Vibrato technology, and I happen to be as much of an expert as anyone alive today. El what? El Vibrato. They were an ancient race that lived here before humans. Well, they mostly lived underground, so they might still be living as far as I know. Never seen a peep of an actual person, though, just the machines they left behind. Were they space aliens? Could be aliens, or genius pre-humans, or an entirely different terrestrial evolutionary line. 
At this stage of investigation, it's impossible to say. Isn't it exciting? Here, let me have a closer look at your bleeping gizmo. As I expected, it's one of their transponders. It detects other vibrato technology and homes in, you see. That's why it led you here. I've got a thing I've been trying to repair. Tinkers around with the transponder for a bit and plucks a, plugs a strange stone marble into a socket. There you go, good as new. Just stripe it up and down, turn it on or off. Swipe. I gotta warn you, the device will lead you to a abandoned El Vibrato technology, technology, but also might attract unwanted attention. From what? From the El Vibrato, El Vibrato technology. You'll see what I mean, just be careful. Okay. You know, now that I think about it, you arrived at a perfect time. I need to get fur anywhere further with my research. I need more... In order to get anywhere further with my research, I need samples of El Vibrato tech. But searching for it eats up all the time I can be used to research it. I get you. Right, you're the adventuresome type, so bring me back the devices you find, and if I can get them up and running, that'll benefit us both. All right, deal. First priority, we'll get my keystone fabricator running. They lock their doors in these little stone alloy blocks, see? So we can make our own. That'll open a lot of doors for us. Literally and figuratively. All right, what do we need? The components aren't rare, but as far as priceless... Uh, uh, they aren't rare as far as ancient, priceless ancient technology goes. Bring me, oh, about five handfuls of scrap. I should be able to salvage the last parts I need from that much. All right. So, got to keep an eye out for El Vibrato scrap. Oh, by the way, El Vibrato creatures will now appear as we wander the map sometimes on occasion. The El Vibrato bleeps. We signal it. Why not? You one reason... Okay. El Vibrato bleeps. You follow the signal because, of course you do. Why wouldn't you? One reason you might not is it led you to a hulking robot that could easily pound you into scrap. Easily is subjective. This thing is not going to be a thing. I'm going to take it down. It's going to die. He's gonna go boom. There, see, look at that. Oh, 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 El Vibrato. All right, I got one scrap. Not bad. All right, I don't actually need to go to the plater. I just wanted to wander from here, because I thought there was something over here. Okay. You rein in your horse, hearing a rattle of bones, chinking and clinking chains. With a hiss, the skittle figure skittles towards you. The hell is that? It's a little confusing to look at. Instead of a skull, it has another smaller skeleton growing out of the top of its spine. It also has a manacle locked around its ankles, trailing a length of broken chain. Looks like it escaped from somewhere. Is that real? How much have I been drinking? I see it too. So, not that much. Alright. Fix him. You grab hold of the little skeleton, yank it off the large one with a pop. You set it down, it runs around excited for a moment and runs away. I wonder if that's a metaphor for something that's essential or... Ooh, look! XP! <laughs> Open it up with my crowbar. Cantina lock. There's... Poor lost crate, maybe you can help it. Yeah, it's a crate in the road, which is not a crate's natural habitat. I admit that was kind of cute. Lazy A Dude Ranch. Check it out now, dude. Alright. I got a needle. I got a needle. I got a needle, needle, needle. Oh! Hippies! Hippies have taken over. Howdy. Hey, yeah. Howdy, man. What's happening? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Not much, man. We moved on this little patch of land to grow crops, but then we decided it's more natural just to let Gaia grow whatever she wants, right? I bet that's easier, too. <laughs> right on, man. Um, where'd you get that hat? Oh, this? A friend of mine made it, man. Um, I forget which one. What do you take for it? Well, I've been thinking of trying a new style, like uh, one of those hats the old army guys used to wear back in the day. Like, um, an ironic statement, man? There's an old fort over yonder that way. I'll swap you and find one of those. Like this one? Nice, man. Potter's like commerce, man, but natural. Can you dig? Alright. This hat is more like a sack woven from red, gold, and green wool. It's like something out of a dream. Yeah, I'm not gonna smack talk their hats, because their hats are awesome. Howdy, I'm Kelburnett. I'm Louise. Louise Lathrop. Why the long face? Oh, jeez. Because I'm basically stuck farming with a couple of dummies who don't know how to farm a dang thing, so they just let weeds grow and call it natural. I'm so sick of eating dandelions I could scream. How'd you get in this predicament? I headed west after graduating baking school and fell in with these guys. They talked big game about natural grains. Fool I was. I didn't realize all they were interested in was getting silly on local weed, loco weed and not going any work. Why don't you leave? I haven't got any meat or prospects. I mean, dandelions are terrible, but they're better than eating dirt. You looking for work? Gosh, yes, desperately. The only trade I know is baking. Do you know anywhere hiring a baker? Heck, even unpaid work is better than this. 
If it comes to room and board, I want out of here. I don't. Shucks. If you hear anything, let me know. I will. Your garden sucks. All right. Maybe I can give them the cow's mane, but they can't grow it until I can get some other stuff. So I'm not giving up my seeds yet. Shoot the pine cone. I, I'm just, just try hoping for new locations. Ooh, cluster of gin blossoms growing away from Allison Road, which is their native, native habitat. Natchative? I am inventing words. I am a wordsmith. Hey, okay, rustling inside the bushes draws your attention. That's what adventurers do, no matter how bad an idea it turns out to be. It turns out to be a goblin. A goblin wearing ugh, clown makeup and practicing cartwheels and mostly failing. Eventually, they give up on tumbling and start repeatedly showing a metal, shiny metal ball in the air. Hey, goblin. Hello. Hi. What are you two doing? I'm learning to a I'm to learning a juggle. Tosses a single ball in the air again, but distracted by the conversation, misses the catch. Okay, why? A clown be coming, joining the circus, far to traveling, far to traveling, then to popping. Popping? No, never mind. Teach it to juggle. Better to juggling with more than one ball. Sorry, only one ball to having. You know who else only had one? You know what? N never mind. You teach the goblin a simple levitation trick that makes the one ball juggling routine a little more impressive, and they thank you by sharing their lunch. Yeah, I'm a greasy moxie, but blowing muscle and mysticality? No thank you, you can keep your sandwich. Alright. Broken wagon. Well, for being honest, it getting attacked like monsters is probably more likely what happened than a simple mechanical failure. You dismount and investigate. Most of the easy picking, pickings have already been taken. There's still a safe two heavy finished scavengers to move. And it was full of meat! Alright. Burly Grizzled Man. Everything is busy peeling the skin off a no longer... Well, a burly grizzled man in leather everything is busy peeling the skin off a no longer recognizable animal. Looks up at you, brandishing his skin and knife as if to say, You bother me, I'll be next. Or, you bother me, you'll be next. Yeah, I got that. That's not a knife. This is... Don't be stupid. They're both knives. So you're a skinner, too? Not professionally. It's a hobby. All right. Come here. Watch close. I'll show you some tricks. All right. Free... You don't understand the tricks, but they result in getting some free skins, so you're happy. All right. Yay! Okay, so if anybody brandishes a weapon at you, you should show them yours, and you'll become best friends forever. That's how it works, right? Yay! Hey, Circus Dan. I'm gonna call it after I visit you. Yes, thank you. Alright. I have limited reserves of time and patience, so I recommend you waste neither one, Cabal Nook Crab Dangle. I checked out the tannery, and what'd you discover? Bunch of animated cow hides, plus whole cow skeleton with leather sort of draped over it. They were able to animate the leather. Interesting, though not wholly unexpected. More to it. It was a le it was bleh. it was leather. There was leather there that wasn't possessed, and we know if they can animate any old leather because of people's hats and stuff. I think it's just untanned hides. Well, that is information worth knowing. How nice it is when an arrangement works out to mutual benefit. Two fifty meat. There's more where that came from if you can tell me more about the tanning process. Plant called cow's bane. They use it in tanning leather, and apparently the cows hate it and attack anyone growing it. Fascinating and valuable information indeed. If you can provide me with a sample or a supply, I'll reward you handsomely. I've killed some cows. You can have the cow tongues. You can have the cow fangs. You can have the bells. You can have the soul fragments. And that's it. Okay. There we go. Alright, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, or subscribe. Or not, I'm not the boss of you. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm sounding more froggy. Good night.